picture in the right case. Happy Friday, friends. Welcome. I'm Mary Nape from Columbus, Ohio, and in the Stampin' Peace studio. What'd you say? Oh, and Andrea just said, it's Thursday. It's not Friday, it's Thursday. Happy day before Friday. <laughs> oh, I guess that tells you what kind of busy week I've had. Um, and speaking of Andrea, she came back to work today. You all know um, she and John had a baby girl. She'll be two months old tomorrow. I can't believe Riley's two months old already. But Riley's been here and she's been very good. In fact, a little too good because I didn't get to hold her at all. She's basically slept nearly the whole time she's been here. So Andrea and I got a lot of work done. Um, Andrea's feeding her now, but when she's finished, I'll, I hope Andrea will just pop on for a second and so you can see Riley and Andrea. Um, yeah, I wish it was Friday too, Margaret. <laughs> um, a couple of reminders. Saturday, August 19th is the last day to register for my supremely awesome class to go featuring this stamp set. And with that, you'll make eight cards to each of four designs. You can just get a sneak peek of them here. Um, super fun, it's selling really well. I'm excited about that. Um, you can get information about that class on my website, stampinpeace.com. And also, if you would like to buy just the PDF tutorial for that, um, you can do that in my PDF store, also at stampinpeace.com. All the information you need is there. Um, two other re Stampin' Up! reminders. Number one, if you earned bonus days coupon codes last month, you need to redeem them by the end of this month, okay? By the last day of August. So um, if you wanna use those $5 coupon codes that you've got, uh, make sure that you make your list and get that order in within the next, what, 10, 12 days or so. And the other Stampin' Up! reminder is all of our online kits are on sale this month only through the end of August. Some are marked 10%, some 20%, some 30%. And they are all pretty awesome. I love getting the kits because I don't have to think a lot when I do these. I just open one up and I sit and craft for a while and it's a nice little escape for me. Here's one. Christmas tag kit. Um, what's another one? Oh, here's one. And I'll be doing some of these on Monday during my free craft and chat. So if you would like to have an hour and a half or so of crafting fun online, I hope you'll join us. I'll be posting the um, Zoom link here. Um, but it is Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's August 21st, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Everybody brings their own craft. Um, it's not a demonstration or a class of any kind. It's just crafters gathering virtually. We introduce ourselves, maybe say where we're from. We share a little bit, get to know each other, and um, just socialize while we're each doing our own projects. So I do um, like to do my kits then. So hope you'll join us. Okay, today I'm teaching the pinwheel card. If you're like me, at first glance of the pinwheel card, you think, oh, that's so hard. I don't, I don't know if I can do that. Well, let me tell you, it's not hard and it's easy with my instructions and um, measurements and you can do it. Anybody can do it. So I'm going to flip my camera around now. And while I do that, would you please share this live video, inviting others to join us this afternoon.
So there's a new little bakery um, very close to my house that opened three months ago, and I went this morning to try it out. Um, since it's Andrea's first day back working in the studio, I figured we need a little, a little treat. So, um, so that was nice. I like supporting other small businesses, and it's a cute little place. I'm hoping they get good business and they stay around for a while. But yummy treats there. Okay, so here is, and today I'm going to make with you three pinwheel cards, and I will be giving away all the cards, so hang on till the end. Um, and as I'm doing these, I'm going to introduce you to, well, three, two of the three cards use um, products from the new mini catalog that starts on September 6th, and so I'll be showing you some of those, getting a sneak peek, I'll say, of some of those things. All right, so let me show you just how easy it is to make a beautiful pinwheel card. And I'm going to use this because I like the darker lines at the inch mark. I've got two cardstock squares, and these each measure two and five eighths inches by two and five eighths inches. Perfect squares, two and five eighths inches. And the reason I put it on this grid is with the darker lines on this grid paper, it's really easy for me to get the opposite um, points straight lined up well. And I'm going to use multi-purpose glue for most of the parts of the card today. Once I do that, I'm just going to put some multi-purpose glue right there in the center. You don't want to get it out too far. Keep it close to the center. And then I'm just going to put the other square on top in the opposite direction. So the first one I laid down like a diamond shape, and this one I'm laying down so look, it looks like a square straight on. Just push those together, and again, the lines on the grid paper are just there to help me line things up. Then I have eight one and a quarter inch squares of designer series paper, and four of them we need to be the same pattern. And then on the other four, and where's my missing one? You know, I picked up one off of the floor last night and it was probably that. If I can find where I put it. If not, I'll just cut another. Oh, here it is. This, these little squares, and this just happens to be the back of the one. You don't have to use the front and back of the same sheet. You can pick whatever ones you want. But let me just go through this. This is the all about, yes, all about autumn six by six designer series paper. So on one side is realistic images. They almost look like photos. And the back side is different geometric shapes and patterns. And there's, um, some metallic copper in there. So really pretty, great for fall, but those patterns on the back, honestly, you can use all year round. I like that wood grain too. Look at this one, that beautiful fall scene. This looks like a sweater or a blanket, knit sweater, knit blanket. So lots of great choices. So that is where I got the DSP from. So once you have your two sets of DSP and <clears throat> they're all your squares are cut to um, one and a quarter inches, the first thing you're going to do is we're gonna put all these on top of our pumpkin pie. Um, I'll call it a star shape now or pinwheel shape. For the very first square only, okay? When you flip it over, just put a dot of glue in one corner, okay? And we're gonna start at the top left corner and I want this glue dot to go right here, 
okay, starting in the top left corner, but my dot of glue is here at the top right of that square. That's the only part, okay? And you only need to do that on your first square, okay? But it's really important that the first square we're able to lift up. And you'll see why momentarily. And then I just go around and add more squares. And I'm just lining up one corner of the square in each point of that pinwheel shape. And I'm just alternating between the two patterns. You could also um, do embossed cardstock. Use your favorite embossing folder and emboss four cardstock squares instead of the second DSP. Okay, so this is my seventh square. So we're back to the beginning, and remember, this is the square that we said we need to be able to lift up. Whoops, I just slid that one out of place. There we go. So what I'm going to do is put adhesive on the back of that eighth square, and I'm just going to tuck it under that first square, making sure to get the two edges straight in that cardstock corner. And then I have that. And I'm just now going to put a tiny bit of glue behind that first square to hold it down in place, okay? And remember, I'll be making two more cards, um, different colors, different DSPs, etc. So you'll get to see me repeat that process again. Now I have a piece of five and a quarter by four inch designer or um, mossy meadow, right? Mossy meadow cardstock, and I embossed this with. Let me find it here. Oh, where is it? I don't know where I put it. Anyways, it is embossed with the fall leaf embossing folder, okay? The fall leaf embossing folder. You will not see it in the catalog. I don't think it's in the catalog, but you can find it online. I double checked this morning. So just look up fall leaf embossing folder. Um, and that's how I got this beautiful embossed cardstock, all different kinds of leaves. And I'm using a very vanilla card base, five and a quarter by four inches. No, I said that wrong. This is five and a quarter by four inches. It feels like Friday already doesn't. Listen to me, I'm getting my things mixed up. Cardstock, five, five and a quarter by four inches for the cardstock layer. The card base, is five and a half by eight and a half inches, scored at four and a quarter. So the finished size of the card is the standard size, five and a half by four and a quarter. Put that in the center. And for now, until I put my sentiment on, know where, exactly where I'm going to put my sentiment, I'm just going to lay this on top for a moment. And I'll go ahead and stamp my sentiment. And I'm stamping with a grateful heart. And I'm stamping in Mossy Meadow ink. And this comes from the wonderful Autumn Leaves um, suite, the same suite that that beautiful paper came from. You've got the stamp set, 
some awesome dies. And you can see there are a lot more dies than just the ones that cut out um, the stamped images. And then we have this beautiful distressed tile embossing folder, which I have yet to try, but I'm excited to have. And with that suite, we also have a ribbon combo pack. Isn't that pretty? Both of these come together. And then you also have um, the opportunity to purchase these pretty speckled dots. Okay, so all of those things are part of the All About Autumn suite. And those products are available beginning September 6th. Okay, that looks good to me. So let's finish out this card. I'm going to pop up this with dimensionals. I'm using my last little bit here from that sheet. And again, I'm just kind of placing that pinwheel where I think it's going to go and then placing my sentiment. I prefer to um, do it this way, just kind of lay things out. That way, if I wanted to shift things um, up or down or side to side or uh, move something closer to one edge than the other, I can easily do that instead of putting one piece down and then having to pick it up. Now I wanna finish off the center of my pinwheel, so I'm going to use a speckled dot. These speckled dots come in four colors and there are two sizes in each color. You know what, I think I want the small ones there. I changed my mind. Awesome, so what do you think? You get a sneak peek of the All About Autumn suite and some of its products and also a reminder that you can still purchase the fall leaf embossing folder. It was super popular last year. So if you didn't get it then, please know that it is available um, online. All right, let's make another. For this one, I am using the Joy of Christmas Designer Series paper. This is so pretty, very, very traditional, um, but you got some neat um, blended colors and images on the back side. There's some music notes. That's kind of fun and festive, more music notes. The wood grain, another wood grain. So you can see it's, um, leaves and berries, some holly, some pine, things like that. But that's the joy of Christmas sweet. It comes with, it's a mega sweet, so it comes with um, two bundles, which are both awesome. And I'll be using a sentiment from the Joy of Noel stamp set. And then it also has two embellishments. One is this ribbon, and it is ivory and black, or vanilla and black. So a little bit different, and it's a little wider than our other gingham ribbon that we have. So very, very pretty. And that's something I think you can use all year round. And then lastly, the other embellishment is all these loose, um, what do I want to call them? I don't know. What are they called? Loose holly gems and sequins. And I'm going to be using one of the red gems for the center of my pinwheel. 
All right, so let's get back to making the pinwheel portion. I've got two squares of cardstock. They measure two and five eighths inches. I'm laying the one down in a diamond shape and I've got all the points on the same vertical and horizontal lines, right? Opposite points, same vertical and horizontal lines. Then I'm going to place the other square on top as a square, not in a diamond shape. And I'm just centering it, looking at the four points, making sure it's centered. You can look at your grid paper if that helps, helps you center it. But at that point, pretty much just eyeballing it. And then these are the eight squares I'm using for my pinwheel. Does everybody have this, the silicone craft mat? This is wonderful. It keeps glue and adhesive on the mat and not on, not getting sticky on your um, scrap papers or your card base or your desktop, things like that. If you work with hot glue a lot, it's also good for that. Just, you know, how the hot glue drips when you're not actually using it. Um, once it dries, you just peels right off. I love it. Okay, so remember, on your first one and a quarter inch square, you want just one dot of the glue. And when you lay that down, you want it to be here. All right, so I'm gonna do it this way so you can see. And I like to start working in the top left corner of that larger cardstock square. So my glue is right here. I can lift up the rest of that square. That's very important. Make sure you do that first square correctly. The other squares you can glue right down, all the way down, not a problem. Just that first one we need to be able to lift up that opposite corner. Whoops, skipped one. So as you can see, we're just, after we lay that first one down, the other seven, we're just gluing completely down and moving around the pinwheel. And with the size cardstock squares and the DSP squares, there's just a small margin around, um, small margin left around each of those points. Okay, so we're down to one last square. Now take that first square that we um, put down with just that one drop of glue, and we're going to insert this one here. So put your glue on that eighth square Slide it into place with just that small margin of sheeted spruce cardstock. And then the very last step for your pinwheel, oops, it looks like this one slid a little bit. Let's see if I can slide it back in place. Yes. Put a dot of glue, a little bit of glue, behind that first square, okay? Margaret, yes, squares are one and a quarter inch. And when I put this up on my um, website, stampinpeace.com, I'll make sure to have um, all of the measurements there for you. All right, so let me do... Oh, where's my... I feel like things are just disappearing on me today. So I'll just grab a scrap. 
and do it. But I only need this to be, um, I believe it was three quarters inches. So again, the sentiment I'm going to use is from the Joy of Christmas stamp set. And that one coordinates with our wonderful DSP that we're using right here. I'm going to stamp my sentiment oops, in shaded spruce, the same color as my card base. And it says, Making Spirits Bright. One thing I want to point out, maybe you've already noticed, but um, the two stamp sets I've used so far have been photopolymer. So you either want to have your silicone mat underneath, give it a little cushion, or use your stamp and pierce mat okay anytime you're using photopolymer sets you need that extra little cushion underneath if you have an old mouse pad something like that that will work as well all right i'm just going to snip each of the ends at an angle here's a trick to make sure my angles are the same. After I cut that first, first end, I pick up that piece I cut off, line it up, and just run my the edge of my paper snips right along that. And that gives me just nice even um, angles. All right, let's put this card together. My card base is shaded spruce, five and a half by eight and a half inches, score at four and a quarter and fold. I'm using basic white five and a quarter by four inches for the inside. And I also have another piece of designer series paper from that same set called Joy of Christmas. Okay, so all of these come from the same set, Joy of Christmas. And it too measures, whoops, it too measures five and a quarter by four inches. Once again, I'm just going to set my pieces in place. I think that looks pretty good. You can also decide, do you want the more, um, do you want one pattern in the diamond shape, top, bottom, left, right, or do you want it in the square pattern? See what I'm saying? I don't know how to describe that. Okay. But I don't know how I like it. To me, I like them both ways. The other thing you can think about is you can certainly um, put these pinwheels on a horizontal card as well. I could do something like that if I wanted, okay, or have a smaller sentiment. So you still have lots of possibilities. Don't ever feel like you have to do it exactly as me. I want you to um, just kind of Go with your own gut. Go with your feel. If, if it looks good to you, go with it. It doesn't always have to be the same. I never want anybody to feel like they can't deviate from my cards or somebody else's cards that they see. That's what being creative is. We just allow ourselves to experiment, change things up, show things in new ways, etc. Yeah, 
And I think that looks good to me with the exception of I want to um, put a little something, a little gem in the center there where everything comes together. Now, the gems in here and the sequins, they do not have adhesive on. So for this gem, I'm just going to stick it on a mini glue dot. And then I'll lift that up and put it in the center of my pinwheel. And that finishes it off nicely. What do you think? Pretty Christmas card, right? Pretty holiday card. It would certainly brighten my spirits to receive that card. So we've done our fall card and our holiday card. <clears throat> um, I don't have any Halloween paper yet, and I don't know how many of you make Halloween cards, but I will probably get some. I just don't have it yet. Um, so instead, I chose a designer series paper from our annual catalog, and it is from the Let's Go Fishing Bundle. Get all my pieces and parts out here. Okay, once again, I'm going to start with those two and five eighth inch squares. Lay the first one down in a diamond shape and opposite corners or opposite points should be on the same vertical or horizontal line. I'm gonna put a little bit of multi-purpose glue in the middle and then I'm ready to lay down this square. I'm using multi-purpose glue so that I can move this top square around so that it's centered well. You can see that I have the one triangle there a little, little too small, which me tells me it wasn't centered properly. Okay, look at the four corners and also look at the lines on your grid paper. I think that looks pretty good. Yes. Okay. Now here are my pieces of designer series paper. And I've gone for ones that um, I guess I'd say are kind of plain. Okay. They are just kind of plain. Cindy, I'm happy to hear you say that. She says, these are pretty cards and not difficult. That's exactly why I love demonstrating to you so that I can give you the steps, the tips and tricks to make it easy because I want you to have fun making these cards just like I am. So on, remember on that very first square, you have eight one and a quarter inch squares. On the very first one, put a dot of glue in just one corner. I'm gonna start up here in the upper left corner of that top square. And I want, when I lay this down, I want that glue dot to be in the upper right corner of the DSP, okay? So that means I have the glue right where my finger is now. And I'm able to lift up the rest of that square. That's the most important step in making a pinwheel card. If you remember that, the rest is easy. And then I'm just going to go around and add the alternating pieces of DSP to each of the pinwheel corners. And remember your cardstock um, margin is very small. I really like the Let's Go Fishing Suite. It is wonderful for um, masculine cards, 
but it can be for anybody. If you know a, a woman or a child that likes to fish, certainly for them as well. And then some of the patterns are, are, are very much fishing, um, in particular fly fishing related. But on the back, there are other patterns, um, some ginghams that you can use for other occasions. Whoops, that's sliding around. There we go. Okay, so we're back to the beginning where we have that one, that very first square, and we're able to pull it up. I'm putting my glue on the very last square, and I'm just going to slide it underneath the first square and line it up with the point of the pinwheel. So I have that finished now. The last step is just to add a tiny bit more glue to that first square to hold it down like the others, okay? So the number one step to remember is only one dot of glue in one corner of that first square, okay? I chose this designer series paper for the front of my card, or I should say the card for one of you, because somebody will get this. Both of my tape dispensers are at the very end. That measures five and a quarter by four inches, same size for the very vanilla piece on the inside. Now, most often I use white on my cards, right? I you know, chose very vanilla because that's one of the main colors in the Let's Go Fishing um, designer series paper. When I used it on my fall card, I used it just because I think um, the very vanilla is pretty with those um, rich fall colors. All right. I'll put this here. I'm making this the, the front of this one a little fancier. There are more steps. I have a three and three and a three quarter inch strip of misty moonlight cardstock. So four inches by three quarter inch. Putting right across there. I'll pull this down just a little bit. And then I pulled out another um, pattern from the designer series paper package. This measures four inch, four inches by a half inch. And then I'm going to stamp a sentiment. And this is happy retirement. Oops, that's not quite centered. I'm going to restamp that. Just flip over your cardstock and try again when that happens. Oh, that's better. Okay. And that looks good there. I've got this little fish that I fussy cut with my paper snips. There is one die in the um, Gone Fishing Bundle that allows you to cut out um, one, a few of the fish, but it's really just one size, one shape. But I like to use other fish. So I just go ahead and fussy cut some, and they're really not hard to do. So I'm actually using the fish on this card as my embellishment. 
And I was gonna go ahead and pre-cut this fish, but I wanted to talk to you for a moment about um, cutting. A lot of people do not like to cut. And have you ever seen a small child, um, preschooler, kindergartner around that age, cutting for the first time? They might have a big ghost drawn on their paper and they will go around, they'll hold their paper and they'll just tr keep trying to move their arm around. And what we need to teach kids and learn ourselves is that to do um, accurate cutting, we're actually moving the paper more than we are our scissors. There's some, uh, and I don't remember the name of it. I think it had a German name, but um, a very old craft art where they cut very, very fine shapes and patterns and things like that and then layer them. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But notice that I'm moving my paper around much more than I'm moving the scissors. The scissors are really just cutting. So most of the time, the position of my hand and arm, pretty much in the same position as I'm cutting most of this. Uh, de uh, it's not decoupage I'm thinking of, but yes, they do fine cutting in that. But it's, um, it almost looks, after they cut it, it almost looks like lace. And then it's like, and I don't know, I'll have to look it up. I'm going to pop this one up with dimensional. So here you see I've got my two fish that I fussy cut and, um, they're kind of acting as embellishments or decorations for my car. I'm gonna put that one there, and then I'm gonna glue this to the top. Okay, now after seeing my demonstration, making these three pinwheel cards, tell me, tell me, tell me, who is going to be making these? or something similar when I say making these. You don't have to make the exact same thing. I'm saying make a pinwheel card. What do you think? Easy enough, right? You just needed somebody to give you the dimensions and show you how. Um, if you would like to have your name put in the drawing to receive one of these cards in the mail, please type in the comments now uh, pinwheel card. <gasps> yes, Tony, that's it. I was thinking of the S-C-H word, Sharon Schneet. Yeah, okay. Oh, and it's called decoupage in French, so they are kind of the same thing. Okay, awesome, Tony, you're on it. Thank you so much, girl. Okay, pinwheel card. I think there are a lot of people who would like to get one of those pinwheel cards. Okay, I need to flip this because, oh, wait a second, why isn't it flipping? Hold it, hold it. It's not flipping. Why is this not flipping, Andrea? Don't know. No, it won't do the, it won't do the selfie video. Okay, you're gonna have to hold it. <laughs> I'll trade you. <laughs> Wait one second. I want you to see my special guest. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Hi. Tell everybody who you are. This is our precious Riley. She came to work at Grandma's Stampin' Peace Studio today. Can you say hi? Can you give a smile? She was very smiley when she got here this morning. Let's see, can you give a smile for everybody? Say hi. 
And she's going to be two months old tomorrow. I can't believe it. Two months old. Yes. And Andrea's here too, but she's on the other side of the camera because I couldn't get to flip to selfie mode. And because the baby just spit up all over her. <laughs> oh, say hi. Say hi. All right, everybody. Thank you for indulging me and letting me show you my special visitor. She's just precious. I can't get enough of her, really. Um, and I will see you on Monday at 5 p.m. for my next Facebook Live demonstration. Until then, have a good weekend. Oh, bless you. Bless you. And she is a two-in-a-row sneezer, aren't you? But I will see you um, Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time for a Facebook Live demonstration. And also, I will be posting a Zoom link if you want to join us on Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time for our craft and chat. Okay. Talk to you later. Happy stamping.